It's the Waiting for Next Year dot com podcast. This is your host Dave Sterling. With me, uh, internet celebrity from the Second Arrangement, Kelly Dwyer. How's that for an intro? Spectacular intro. I love that intro. Internet personality. I mean, that's, that's celebrity. That's, that's, even know, yeah, ce- oh, celebrity. Even better. So fame comes before the talents. The, the, my, my nose walks in the door before my words do. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> it's, At the it's best a, time of year for Cleveland in, the, in an otherwise unremarkable season. Let's talk hoops. Yeah, well, you know, the blue check mark walks in before anything else you know, in, <laughs> in, in our times. Uh, <laughs> so uh, despite, you know, my thoughts towards Bill Simmons, uh, I run a completely Homer-based podcast and I don't claim to be an objective podcast, so just I'm warning you straight out of the gate. Cleveland-centric, homerism, ridiculous takes based on that. So Surely you, you concede you've earned that. Yeah, I would say You've so. got the best player in the world in your town for however many years out of the last 14, 15 years. You're in the finals every year. You get to do that. That's true. Well, it's it was one of those things that during the the Boston series, all we talked about was... Hey, do what you got to do. Get to Game 7. LeBron will take it from there. And it kind of worked out. And have we gotten ourselves in a bit too much of a hole this time? Uh, Also, note to the listener, when I reached out to Kelly about this, um, about getting together to podcast, I believe it was 1-0 Golden State after, you know, the Cavs had a game stolen from them, but... By either I think the it was referees. after George Hill hit the first free throw. That's when he reached out to me. You're like, we got this wrapped up. <laughs> Let's get KD in here. Yeah, the other one. Yeah, the second, the likable one. Oh, 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 you haven't seen my tattoos. <laughs> well, I don't know if you have a beard, but it has to be better than his. Uh, no, uh, that's the, that's why he's always going to be better than me because the, the the man is capable of growing up facial hair. So I'll, I'll praise halfway, Kevin Durant. And I'm going to have to uh, capable. Yeah, halfway capable, but you know, sixty percent, seventy percent true shooting to 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 ruin your ruin your season. Yeah, you reached out when it was still uh, doable, and now it yeah. seems very less doable. It seems a lot less doable, and you know, I don't know how I'd feel had they won last night and KD not gone crazy and all that. And the the biggest problem that I saw in my discussions with people uh, around Cleveland and the surrounding areas is. We were all ready to buy the Eastern Conference Championship shirts after the Boston series. The finals was going to be gravy on top. And we were ready to just, okay, let's try to steal a game or something like that. Then we all got sucked in in game one. (laughs) Oh, no. Then we saw Uh LeBron James and his band of strange people really play well against the Warriors. (laughs) And uh, 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 other than the actions of... Uh, a couple of referees or J.R. Smith or George Hill, the Cavs stealing an away game and flipping the series and Cavs in six seems like a possibility. And so we got sucked back in because had it been like last year and the Cavs just get rolled a couple of times, we're fine. Let's just try to get a game at home that we can win and, you know, we'll move on. Ever since they brought in KD, we don't have any business being yeah. here. But then... You said, wait a minute, maybe this ragtag bunch of weirdos matches up better to Golden State than we do, than, uh, than we did in years past. Oh, okay. But uh, I guess from my perspective, and I was saying this uh, after all the trades happened, had the Cavs just, if Kyrie had not had whatever happened to him that happened to him, and he would have stayed, I wouldn't have expected any other result in the finals. But trying a different group... I guess my question to you from a more national perspective is what does – I see the general coverage of the rest of the Cavs be the uh, SNL sketch and stuff like that. Yeah. What's the national perspective of LeBron James plus these other guys? It's the same. It's got to be the same. But, I mean, to hear you retell it, it appears as if you felt something as if you felt emotion, as if you were dragged into something that, that, that reminded you that you were alive. I'm having a hard time. If 
finding trouble with that, that you believed in these people that you had no idea you'd ever have to remember how to spell their last name and back in February, yeah. even though Nance really isn't that hard to no. spell. Clarkson's I mean, pretty come easy. on, you got to, you got to have, you got to, you just said it yourself. You believe that somehow this crew might match up. Whereas on July 5th, 20, whatever, when Kevin Durant signed 2016, you'd given up most hope. Yeah. Uh, so, so you had another wonderful spring. You were one of, you know, 28 cities that, you know, the, the 28 other cities didn't get to do that. 27. I'm not sure if Oklahoma city counts. I mean, Houston didn't even really enjoy its spring. Even if Utah got to the second, none of these teams got to have fun. Boston had its heart ripped out. Toronto, I don't even think exists anymore. No. I, everything has changed because of this guy. He even changed your mind about, you know, how how Larry Nance matches up and how Tristan Thompson can do after six months in mothballs. So, yeah, the, the perception is about the same as the you know, as the SNL sketch and, and for good reason, it's, it's an injured team and not a good team and a team that hasn't had a chance to play together and whatever the heck Jordan Clarkson is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even in its best moments, we still find a way to, uh, to screw it up. I E Rodney hood playing 15 minutes in a row last night to end the game. So, but you know, never apologize for having fun. Well, I will say this. I've talked to some other people about this. the, and this is, sounds like the biggest uh, kind of, I wouldn't even know how to characterize it, but it seems like the biggest douchey uh, basketball fan statement to say, you know, those years we just swept through the playoffs. <laughs> but, like, there were so many more moments during these playoffs. And I'm going to count sweeping the Raptors as one singular moment, but unless you face real adversity like we did in the Indiana series and like we did in the Boston series, you don't get moments where LeBron has to hit a game winner, uh, where you really have doubts about what they can do and can they regroup and come back and can they make adjustments. And it really was a more enjoyable playoff experience because of the lower lows, the highs seemed higher for sure. That's, I mean, that's good. You were never waiting for the other shoe to drop because Indiana came right out and kicked your tail in that first game. So right. it was, there was never like, you know, okay, we took down the Pacers in five games, but we haven't really played well. Are we going to get, you know, something going to bite us here? And yeah, LeBron was also saving your season with game winners against Minnesota in February. So you guys have had to live however many lifetimes. I mean, you thought that was the case in years past, where it was by the time you got to the postseason, it felt like a year and a half. But this season was entirely different. And you can count the Toronto thing for one moment, but that felt like each punch was felt. I mean, it, it was, you know, it was a strange scene down there. It was just a, uh, in Cleveland and in Toronto. So I, it, it don't. It's it's a strange thing that he does to people that no other athlete has ever done, and you can't parse it out with like football players get to do it in like three or four year chunks. Baseball players, I don't even know how it works. LeBron James, I mean, February to, to March is a season, and April to April twenty third is a season. It's just it's it's remarkable with him, but that's what this greatness does. He can make it so you think that that Jordan Clarkson skittering on the baseline might work. Well, it, he makes me think that as delusional as it sounds, well, we're down 3-0. No team has ever come back from that. But then again, two years ago, we were down 3-1, and no team had ever come back from that. And, you know, maybe. No, no, you're going to lose. Yeah, but I'm aware it might, you might not lose for a while. I mean, there's Golden State's Golden State, and you can't beat a LeBron James team, you know, four times in a row. It's It's really tough, and Golden State can't help but play down. And I've, you know, Golden State has to lose in Oakland at some point. So there's your game five. And then, you know, come back to game six and watch the Warriors win on your home court. But, but yeah, no, this season or this, this series is out of it. It, 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 it just can't happen. It's no one's unless someone starts hitting 70% from three, two Cavaliers do it. And, and uh, no, that's just not going to happen. But you got the idea in your head and you wouldn't be wrong in thinking about it. What's 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 impossible about LeBron James winning three games out of four? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> and also hey, Golden State, this is the big bummer about the game three for the rest of America, is that if we do get a long series out of this, and I don't see why we won't still, 
that just it's going to mean that Golden State relents and that's not going to take away from whatever LeBron James might do to extend the series and whatever, you know, husky efforts that everyone puts in pulling up their britches and hitting the baseline jumpers and pulling the whole Rodney Hood experience. Uh, it it it's going to be a bummer because it's going to feel like they were handed one. So, you know, the the remedy for that is to go out and kick some warrior ass, you know, out in California in game 5. I I don't see why this can't extend. I just uh, I can't see a team with that many superstars dropping that many in a row. Well, that's that's the problem from a a Cavs strategy perspective is okay, you have a game where Klay Thompson's not playing well, Steph Curry can't hit the broadside of a barn and oh, well, that latest scrappy free agent pickup that they made just happened to put 43 in and couldn't miss. So it's it's a weird it, it's an impossible setup this league it it just it's all on the whims of who decides what in a summer sometimes and it's just it's the strangest thing it's why you guys are gonna get LeBron James back in whatever year you get him back when he comes in you know and after he's toured the world and elsewhere and, and wins wherever else it's it's just the fact that we get to build these championships off of whims and all of a sudden the second quarter hits and you're reminded that you this guy that can put up forty in no time at all. It's sick, but, you know, the Lakers also had James Worthy. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, here's another uh, kind of Cleveland sports fan versus national sports fan. We, of course, try not to do it too much, but we get sucked into this whole uh, referee situation. Game one ends rather strangely uh, based on a weird referee decision um, I think most rational people in Cleveland will not say that the game is fixed in any way, but could clearly see that the, the Warriors seem to be officiated in a little bit different way, or at least in my take on it is I think the, the basketball talent at Golden State kind of reverse engineered the officiating of the NBA. It's kind of my take on it that they saw how the game was called and built strategies around that more than they get certain calls. What do you think from, you know, tell me I'm crazy, Cleveland uh, no, no. saying there? You, that's got to be it with a little dash of, of the thing that's been in place since, uh, you know, the old Madison Square Garden had George Mikan's name on the side of it. The stars, not so much stars, but just exceptional players are going to get calls because they the referees still think they've earned them somehow because they're so more they're so they're sleek they're fast they get into it quicker it's why jordan got all those calls so yeah the warriors are smart intelligent players that have grown up with professional basketball and video games at their disposal their entire adult lives and childhood lives and they know how to play this game inside it out and and uh yeah they they might get away with some things but yeah I, I, listen it hasn't it, i don't think it's been a fair series it's just you know the shots are going to spin out and and all the you know the, the the super square top of the line get every call correct refs that they put in the finals this time of year they're gonna blow some calls because you know half of these guys are nerds and then the other half are just you know ineffectually trying to take over the game at weird times so right. an entire week can get away from you unfortunately but uh, you know that's that's how it goes unfortunately you had LeBron's never call a foul on me era when he was in Miami and not Ohio. That is rough. Now, uh, now it seems like in the first half, at least in game three, we had the never call a foul when I have the ball. I did, I did like Dan Gilbert's uh, since deleted tweet of the uh, stat sheet showing zero free throws in the entire half. Now, do you think the NBA can find him if he deletes it? Oh yeah, I'm just still trying to figure out what weird asterisks he was putting on, on the top of the free throws. But yeah, LeBron got <laughs> That's hacked. a billionaire thing. LeBron yeah. got touched a lot. I mean, LeBron should have gotten maybe twice as many free throws. I was going to look at it and, and try to count yesterday, but I got caught carried away watching all the assists that they gave him that he didn't deserve in game three. But he deserved way more free throws, and he kind of let that get away from him. I thought he was going to go James Harden nuts in the fourth quarter as, as I'm – Sure, a lot of you did. I thought, you know, that he was just going to muck the game up and, and slow it down and get to the line a ton, and and it didn't happen. And that's why things kind of got away from Cleveland. But, you know, that's also their fault for running obnoxious, uh, you know, time-killing sets and instead of uh, getting their uh, their offense with alacrity like they should have, like Golden State does. So 
you know, yeah, it's been a bummer that, that people are falling apart at the highest level. That that's that we can't get away from that. It's it's from from, uh, you know, tip to top of this whole whole series. But also, again, I still think we got like three games left, to, you know, to kind of get some uh, some more exceptionalism out of this. Well, I'm excited that that you think that anyway, because uh, there's I mean, you look at a lot of. Twitter, Reddit, stuff like that. People are already packing LeBron's suitcase. They're already talking about his last game in Cleveland and where is he going to go and this is what this guy thinks and this is what this guy thinks. And Honestly, can the Cavs win the whole thing? Maybe not. Probably not. But let's, as you said, enjoy the moments and enjoy the rest of the games that can happen. Because literally two years ago, something that never happened happened. So why not why not now? With you're, You've seen the talent of LeBron James be something that can break norms and break things that never happened. You know what I mean? Repeatedly. And, and you know, sometimes you don't get, have to get the blue check mark of a win to credit the – I mean, game one, why was a team like Cleveland – in game one it makes no sense mm-hmm. i know lebron had an amazing an amazing stat line but game one was unfair and yet there by the grace of lebron went the cavaliers and that's what you gotta follow sometimes instead of instead of the wins that yeah maybe they should have had a win in game one and game three but you know just that he's getting them to be competitive with let's not call it ragtag it's just this is a mismatched bad team no no shame on Kobe Altman who did what he had to do poor right. guy oh my god in two different setups did the best he could but you know this is a whack team and we're rooting for him because we love basketball but this is a messed up team and yeah. they almost had an 80 percent free throw shooter win the game for him on in game one so yeah, that 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 weirdness, that that boundary defined stuff that he may not be done with that yet, but also just getting to compete with this stuff might just be enough. I just hope it lasts a little longer. Uh, what would you say? And I'm going to keep doing the same format of question. <laughs> what would you say is the national opinion? Because you speak for the nation. Um, the national opinion of Draymond Green and his on court antics. Oh, man. Well, if. Let's see. If I'm going to speak for the nation first, I'd like to say let's get all the kiosks out of the McDonald's and let's start talking to the regular people behind the counter and save our jobs. Beyond that, I think nation, nation.com thinks that Draymond Green is a, is a bit of a weirdo, but I don't think he's, uh, you know, I don't think it's as offensive as it was in years past because he's just not as, as, he's not as potent as he was offensively. Yeah. He's not, you know, the playmaking hasn't been as there as much. He's not hitting those, you know, the threes. He's not getting the crazy transition stuff going. So maybe he's, uh, you know, in his, in his, he's in his autumn right now. But nah, I don't think ever anyone is Draymond Green's biggest fan. It's just everyone would love him on his team. But he's, he's, I don't, if he's settled, and I think this is settled, I, I just, I am having a hard time having a problem with him right now. The, the thing we get upset about here is, uh, as, and I credited this on Twitter as the only smart thing uh, Van Gundy has said on the broadcast, uh, when the double technicals were called on Tristan Thompson and Draymond Green, that I think, uh, I think it was Mark Jackson said, well, he's going to have to be careful. And Van Gundy said, no, he's not. They're not going to throw him out this early. He can do whatever he wants. And that ended up being true because, like, a minute later, he was stomping around the court yelling bullshit and, you know, getting up in refs' faces. And then you did see, noticeably, he came out and came back in calm and didn't have another outburst the rest of the game. But while he was still fired up from the first one, I don't know. It's it's. We have no idea what the machinations are with what's going to be rescinded, what the money is, what the refs are saying him to the side. I just had to do this. We don't know. Dream on, dream on. Get it out of your system. We have no idea. You know, away from the microphones, these guys sometimes play like, like you know, umpires that are staring down Earl Weaver in the 70s. And they're just like, uh-huh, really? Okay, uh, they, they they don't go the players, yeah, but they talk to them, especially people like Draymond. They just sort of get it out of their system now. So I don't know if it's fair. And listen, I couldn't stand it when what I thought Rasheed Wallace was getting away with everything and and sometimes worse. But it, you know, it it's I can't really say that they've called a great series, but they've made some choices and and that they're going to have to live with. But I don't think we can. 
I don't think any of them are. And here's another thing. Let's just not. I'm done with letting the television uh, paint my narrative for me. I haven't yeah. really nothing against Jeff Van Gundy, everything against Mark Jackson. I, I, I don't think we have to, to shoot anything in that barrel right now. It, you know, if you watch it on mute and maybe play a little music or just get lost with your notes or maybe you're lucky enough to be at the game, that's a fantastic way to do it. Same as putting the radio on. So if yeah. you just let your own head occupy that space, you know, that's I got to that's that's a heck of a way to let to, to observe a basketball game. Yeah, I was at uh, uh, game six in 2016 and oh. yeah, uh, it was funny because the other uh, main host of this podcast, Craig Lindahl, um just texted me one day at work, actually the day of the game, and said, hey, do you want to go tonight? And I'm sitting here, and I, you know, all the news stories in Cleveland are about, you know, the, the upper level last row is going for $3,000 and stuff like that. I'm like, um, yeah, I'd love to go, but I, <laughs> I like I my car. I can't commit to spending that sort of money on anything. Oh, no, I have plenty of extra money in my Flash Seats account. I've been selling tickets all year. If oh, I can get yeah. tickets, will you go? <laughs> and I'm like, well, well, yeah. He's like, I think this is going to be one of the biggest nights in Cleveland sports history, and I kind of want to be there. And I'm like, sure, I'll go. <laughs> so we went, and for the cost of, and I'm going to call Craig out here, that what he orders at a basketball game is a beer and a hot dog, and then later a cup of coffee. So I paid for <laughs> parking and those three items, and he took me to finals game six. And yeah, like you said, feeling the energy there, not hearing the nonsense, not hearing the pontificating. It is a much more uh, refreshing experience, but I still have trouble doing that on the TV. I don't know why. It's it's fair. And, you know, maybe you got to find it, it. It depends on who you're watching with, because sometimes they might be even worse. Maybe it's it's kind of hard to start in the finals. I just. <laughs> I started this year with just doing a lot of the league pass on my computer and, and just not, sometimes I'd have like all time QB with what anyway, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that sometimes an entire generation's worth of takes are shaped by who the big broadcast company decides they want to put on the air that year. So you got a whole generation of people that were as smart alecky and as, you know, cranky as someone like Rick Barry, because that's who was on the TV back then. Or, you know, it, it's, it's, I, again, nothing against Van Gundy. It's just I wish that guy would maybe get a Twitter account so he gets sort of this, you know, this this stuff off out of his chest, off yeah. the system, some another, sort of combination of those two things, and then yeah, we can talk about hoops. Well, that was during the Toronto series. A lot of the games uh, had Hubie Brown on, and I think I talked a lot about on Twitter that Hubie Brown seemed like he was the Raptors' grandpa, and just <laughs> felt like he was getting personally hurt every time. LeBron would do something and he would like he would just make the grandpa version of an audible gasp like LeBron would hit a tough shot and he'd just go oh and it's the best though but when you I, get I grandpa like to like lot. something though <laughs> it's so worth it and and for proof of this watch him and Dick Stockton call the 1989 uh conference finals between the bulls and the pistons and, and michael jordan's just spinning around making grandpa so proud it's it's all the audible o's except they're going in a different direction well and i and i like i like hubie and i don't remember the guy's name who he was paired with but i really liked his play-by-play -play call a lot better and then yeah, mark jones yeah and then you see in the background i think hubie's doing radio so like you'll see him in the background on the at the press table and you're like oh i see hubie's there why can't he do the game it's it's you know it's a drag but you know we're all getting better we're all getting smarter my main issue is I, uh, yeah referees are the biggest part of this game sometimes if if you let them get to be that way but you know you can do that with anything that's driving you nuts if you watch if you only watch Jordan Clarkson or only watch Kyle Korver you know fail to get off you're gonna have a tough time following the game so I got to do that with my ears as well as my eyes yeah um. Where to go now? So you... I think back to Golden State. I just don't see how they're going to lose tomorrow. I'm sorry. I don't want to jinx anything. I, it's just I can't see how this team is going to lose four times in a row unless LeBron goes full martyr. But I don't think LeBron has to. Do you I mean, think... I, I think the proof is already there that he hates everything about that bench sometimes and that he's ticked off. So why not play some more good basketball? What do you think about uh, his ankle? Do you think it's I mean, that would look nasty. That looked bad. But 
I don't know if, if Clay Thompson is fighting through it. Um, I, I, the, the trick with that is is getting him to the line, is just stick him in a, in a place where he's gonna, you know, frustrate Steve Kerr. I, 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 I don't know why they couldn't set up more to get him quick hits and return him into a scoring small forward in Game Three. I thought there was going to be more of that. Down the stretch, I was really ticked off that they didn't have a point guard on the court for the fourth quarter. As much as I like positionless basketball, I would have liked to see some sort of competence. But also, Tyrone Lue may be wearing George Hill out in the first quarter by playing him too long. So yeah. he might be one of those guys that just loses all his everything after that first burst. So, yeah, I have not been happy, as I'm sure Cleveland has it, with some of the rotation dollops here and there. Um, but also, what do you do with a roster like this? So the ankle, I, it, I think... I was bummed out that he let a couple of things go defensively in Game Three. I, I but I'm not going to be able to pretend like I know the difference between the ankle being the cause of that or just him playing in Game 103. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, surprise last night was Rodney Hood all of a sudden showing up, scoring 15 points. I think looking like an NBA player anyway. Your uh, your Ty Lue, you've got to pick that hasn't played bench player to have a ridiculous game for who's your, who's your Cavs pick? Well, they'd all be ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't, he's not going to change anything. I think it's just going to be more LeBron as the point forward. I don't, I can't imagine Calderon's going to come in. I can't imagine green's going to ha- like have a game like he had against, he might, but uh, you know, he's had his minutes goofing around with and every game in this series and and we've seen the you know how that's worked out for for uh, northern ohio so i don't think anyone's gonna bust in and and rodney hood could have 15 or he could go one for 15 it's gonna be about people in wide open threes and and whether kevin love's hand is garbage or not because unfortunately we know his defense is in this series not kevin love's fault he just he can't hack it but how is his hand doing? Can he hit open shots? He shot a line drive in that last game that didn't look good at all. But he also shot some, you know, some looks of good arc on there. And, and you know, I'd like to see ugly basketball. I'd like to see – they let him get away with a lot of sloppy dribbling in that last game, borderline yeah. double dribbles on, on Twister and, like, Barkley stuff. And I'd like to see Love and, and, and uh, LeBron get into that, get some free throws, post up. I'd like to see, uh, it's been documented throughout the regular season that the Jetty Osmond to Larry Nance pick and roll cannot be defended by man or mankind. And I think it's time for that pipe dream to be applied to the NBA Finals. I mean, they probably are the second and third best dunkers on the team besides LeBron. So, you know, why not? Why not? You know, Golden State ran out, what, two, three sets for JaVale McGee out of timeouts in game three of a finals game the other night. Why don't we get some uh, some uh, jetty 20 foot action? I would love that because especially like in the the Boston series. And I, I don't know if you know this about Cleveland. The most popular player on the Cleveland Browns is whoever the backup quarterback is. <laughs> because they're the one that's really good. But for some reason, the stupid coach won't put the right quarterback in. You know, et cetera, et cetera. So we've all been clamoring for Jetty Osman, especially uh, us more, you know, learned types like me. <laughs> that okay. So Boston, their main thing is effort, hustle, grit, stuff like that. Okay, so Jordan Clarkson's not doing anything, offensively or defensively. What is it really going to hurt to put this rookie in who's going to work his tail off, and who's got boundless? I don't remember how old he is, but who's got boundless energy of a young 20 year old. It doesn't even matter because it's all about the scouting report. It's like, do they know that he's not 20? It's, it's all about how the warriors treat him. Do they treat him like a shooter? Do they treat him like a rookie or do they think he's some wily Sarunas Marshallona? So it's really just about what the, how the warriors approach, you know, him on the baseline with the ball in his hands. But uh, yeah, go for him. Anything's better. It's just, I don't know if more small forwards are the answer. Well, that is very true, but that's where I feel like sometimes, and this is all perception from a fan, but that, you know, Ty Lue has always seemed like an embattled coach. And I think any coach that's coaching LeBron James is going to get that like, well, are they keeping LeBron happy? Is he, you know, who's the real coach? You know, they're always going to have that bubble surrounding a LeBron James team. But it seems like he's a little bit hamstrung by that. He can't try a wacky idea 
because the first thing that's going to happen if it doesn't work is well, what the hell was that idea? Yeah, it's it's you know the the class clown is also the guy with uh, you know the best GPA. It's he's not going to be able to get anything past anyone without there being some sort of snooty glare from LeBron. Right. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, you know it's not as bad as it was in 2010, but that's the culture that uh, you know that we've created. That's that's <coughs> excuse me, superstar culture. And you know I don't I don't have an issue with that. I. I do think LeBron, you know, failed his team in game one in that huddle. But, uh, yeah, Lou is, Lou is hamstrung. But, uh, you know, it, I think he's more hamstrung by the roster than, you know, oh, the, yeah. the blankety-blank that he's going to get from LeBron if he decides to goof around a bit. Right. Well, and that's where you were talking about, you know, this team got put together midseason. They didn't have a training camp together for Ty Lue to figure out what everybody can actually do. They didn't have a ton of regular season to really find out and mess with those things. They didn't have, they just didn't have the time. And as you said, it's a ragtag group of positions that they have is that the roster is Even just if very they have strange. the time. I mean, LeBron, I'm not, he's not like, you know, cynical about, he's not hurting the game, but you know, you need to put in reps and they didn't have that. You know, even if they would have had a training camp, because LeBron takes a part of the season off, so it's just always going to be a weird setup with him until he finds his perfect team, and he's going to retire knowing that those things don't exist. Okay, so let's say uh, whatever happens with the rest of the series, um, season ends. LeBron decides to stay. You're Kobe Altman. You've got to you've got to put this team together to beat Golden State next year. What? Trade slash free agent pieces, and I'm not going to make you execute the ESPN trade machine. What types of players or some specific players that are semi-available do you think would help the Cavs match up with the Warriors slash the Rockets? I, w- I would not know where to begin. I mean, it, 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 there's we're running out of players. I'm, I'm not trying to be funny, but <laughs> like we're we're running out of guys. There's there's just not that many. You know, we're in a spot in the game where there are clear advantages to what certain teams are doing. And if you don't have some of those two way, you know, you know, can stay on the court players on your team, you're going to get identified as as the, you know, the group that can't keep up. And, you know, the bummer about Cleveland is all the guys that they want to go after would probably be like, you know, second contract guys. So, you know, the ideal is the you know, the unnamed player that can shoot and play defense at the same time. But. Uh, you know, are they, aren't they all in Boston right now? Aren't they all in Golden State right now? Aren't they all in Houston and maybe Utah and that's it? I, I don't know. You know, give me some names and, 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 and I'll be able to, to see how they fit with LeBron. But, again, Altman's just up against it and he's got the eighth pick to work with or whatever it is. It's, it's, it's just it's going to be a, it's going to be a rough go. I don't know where you start with this. I'd almost appreciate LeBron taking taking a year to go have some fun out in Los Angeles, and then it, 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 you know it's it's I, I don't envy that guy's work, and it's it, and if it doesn't work out for him, it's that's an entire career that could be pissed away, yeah. uh, you know. To and and it wouldn't be his fault. Danny Ferry's going to get another chance anywhere he goes after he does what he does in Cleveland. But you know, first time guys like Kobe Altman, you know, they may not get another go with this and and it's just the you know it's the just the worst burden in the world to be handed you know a, a, a champion after he's been one well and for kobe altman he's handed okay your second best player once out uh a lot of the big moves have already happened try to figure something out and I think it's insane. And like, you know, the whole thing about David Griffin would have been able to talk Kyrie back into staying. David Griffin would have been able to talk LeBron into getting around with him. D- David Griffin would have been able to talk his team's ownership group into settling down and not wanting to burn bridges and not wanting to no get him out of here. If he doesn't want to right. retire a Cleveland Cavalier, then we don't need him around here. You know, David Griffin would have, would have been able to handle all that. But, uh, you know, when you, uh, when you feel like you have to make a move for making a move, uh, you know, sometimes men act this way. I don't know. I, th- I think it's a little bit uh, of a harsh statement to say that, well, the Cavs should have just, uh, you know, ignored Kyrie's request and just had him make him play. Like, I don't think I that think exists. they made a killer trade. I mean, they got a 29 point score and they got a draft pick that everyone coveted. Mm-hmm. No, and I agree. <laughs> now, that, that score turned out not to be healthy, I guess. 
and he turned out not to be a great fit for the personalities on the team. But then to spin that again into, I I think long term, I think Larry Nance is going to be an excellent thing. At least here, we love him because of his you know legacy. Um, you know, Hood Clarkson, who knows? But I mean, Hood just scored 15 points for you, and Clarkson could come out of nowhere, and he got those guys out of absolutely no leverage uh, yeah. uh, last February, and with LeBron breathing down his neck, and also with there being a game every other day. Yeah, for him they to didn't really to. have a practice for the most part in the second half of the season. Good. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of like how it's working out. Okay, so I'm going to force you to do a Game 4 prediction. Uh, do the Cavs, like they did last year, put up a fight, extend the series, or is LeBron done? I can't see LeBron turning in one of those 2010 games. Could you? I mean, I no, can't. I, I that don't, just but... doesn't. Because it would have to be something like that. I think he's like grown I mean... from that time. I don't think he's the type of person to do that anymore. Which That'd is, be the only thing, and, is, and I, there's no way. There's, he's just too different now. So yeah, yeah. And, 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 and if he's to me in his then, his free agent search, as, as they're calling it, that's where I don't see him going to a Houston or a Philadelphia or a Boston. I don't see him wanting to plug in and be the last piece. I think he is more of the build it type. Now maybe as he ages and sees that his you know he's mortal. Maybe he he does, but you know it. It seems to me like he wouldn't want to go in and not be the guy in charge. But, well, because there's only thirty teams and there's only so many options every summer. He's just gonna whatever it is. He'll talk himself into acting or being that person, whatever role he sees from in Cleveland or any other town. So, you know, that's just the bummer of his own market. But I, I no, I it's got he's he's he may not play expertly. It's just gonna be one of those games where he probably just like it looks like game three was on its way to be. Uh, you know, with six minutes left in the fourth quarter, it's just one of those games where he triple doubles enough. To win, and someone's going to hit for twelve points, and maybe you know Corver finally gets going. I mean, after that first, you know, the first couple of shots Corver took in that in that last game, you just knew his head wasn't in the right place. So maybe him on a Friday night will be better. And sometimes that's just enough, especially when you have Golden State acting human, which unfortunately is the only way to beat Golden State these right. days. <laughs> right. Well, and I think they'll probably act human on Friday. I think even if in their head they consider themselves they've won the series they'd rather celebrate at home you know maybe not who knows maybe they'll get swept who knows <laughs> i don't think they're gonna celebrate at all i think they're gonna celebrate in cleveland you think game six i think so see i think if it comes back to cleveland i i by that point if you've really got it back to three two i think I don't know how you feel about series momentum. I think you get a lot. Uh, there's, a, I think it'll either be five or Cavs win in seven. And that, Again, this is how I the felt rules in change the way they are with, the, you know, now that it's the same thing that puts it in a game six to begin with is LeBron's amazing ability to make something on nothing turns into the same rule breakers from Golden State where they have four different superstars that can just take that momentum and, yeah. and stick it in the disposal. Yeah, I agree. Well, all right. I don't know if I feel any better, but I don't know that's what this was supposed to be. So <laughs> I really enjoyed talking to you, though. You'd have a whole lot of, uh, uh, you know, complainy sports writer types coming back into the wonderful city of Cleveland for an extra day in, Which in Game loves. 6. And, you know, maybe that'll knock some sense into them. I'm not one to pander, but I spent a lot of time in Cleveland in the 2017-18 season. And I love Northern Ohio. It's a wonderful place to be in winter, in spring, and summer. And, uh, yeah, I just hope it gets another game in the series. Uh, I don't know about the winter part, depending on the winter, but uh, I will no, say... No, winter's the worst, but, you know, you got to <laughs> work your way through. If you if you have a bad time in Cleveland, you're just... You haven't had the right person to show you what to do. That's It's kind of on you if you have a bad time in Cleveland. Like, there's yeah. plenty to do. You just need to seek it out. Exactly. And if you don't have that person, you know, that's why we have the internet. You don't need a person. Exactly. Use the internet. Google sunshine and see what it says in Cleveland. There you go. All right, well, where can people find you if they're not already familiar with your work? Well, I'm going to be uh, uh, documenting the growth of my new site, the second arrangement on my Twitter feed, which is sometimes functional and fun, KD on Hoops. 
at twitter.com. Oh, no, wait, that's my email address. My Twitter feed is twitter.com slash Uh There you can find links to my new project, The Second Arrangement, a website that uh, sends stuff to your email box every morning talking about the games from last night, the behind the box score column, and all sorts of features in the summer where we deep dive in all sorts of historical goodness. It's a wonderful wonderful waste of time it's it's like the internet used to be where you could just sort of like click on something and just disappear for a while and not feel some sort of in you know need to go uh comment on something or take this back on twitter to fight someone with it it's just a good time it's the second arrangement you can google that or you can just follow my dumb twitter feed i'm gonna i'm not gonna i'm gonna be honest with you I've been pronouncing your Twitter handle K Don Hoops, not K D on okay. Hoops. So everyone does that. I'd right, say fine. it's I'd say it's probably seventy five percent, but that's just fine. <laughs> All right. I've never known a Don I've disliked. <laughs> that's a good point. Well, Kelly, thank you for uh, being with me tonight and uh, talking Cavs. I really appreciate it. No problem. Everyone up there, have fun with the rest of the season and whatever you're going to get from here on out. All right. Thanks a lot. This has been the Waiting for Next Year dot com podcast.